Right now, as you watch this, trillions of ghost-like particles called neutrinos are passing through your body, through the walls and even straight through the earth. And you don't even feel a thing because they interact so weakly with matter that they are impossible to notice. And that's exactly what makes them so fascinating and yet so frustrating for scientists. Hello and welcome to Pure Science with me, Soumya Pillai. Before we get into the discovery, let's first begin with some basic science behind it. Now, neutrinos are elementary particles with a neutral charge and extremely low mass, making them almost undetectable and also earning the moniker of ghost particle. These particles hold important clues about how the universe works, but they are incredibly hard to produce and control. So usually we need giant particle accelerators or nuclear reactors to generate them. These are costly, massive and not very precise. That's why a new idea from physicists at MIT is promising. Researchers have proposed a kind of neutrino laser, a way of producing beams of neutrinos similar to how lasers make beams of light. In a generic laser, Atoms are coaxed into a special state where they all emit light in sync, creating concentrated, coherent beam. But the MIT team wondered, what if they could do the same thing with neutrinos? Their idea is to take radioactive atoms, which naturally emit neutrinos when they decay, trap them and cool them down into unimaginably low temperatures, even cooler than outer space, until they form what's called a Bose-Einstein condensate. A Bose-Einstein condensate, first created in labs in 1995 with rubidium atoms, is a state of matter where atoms stop behaving like individuals and merge into a single quantum wave, showing macroscopic quantum effects. This discovery even won the Nobel Prize in 2001. Once you have a condensate of radioactive atoms, the atoms can decay not randomly, one by one, but together in sync, in a burst that's much faster and stronger than ordinary decay, a process known as superradiance. For some context, superradiance was first proposed by physicist Robert Dyke in 1954 and has been observed in light emissions where many atoms emit photons all at once, producing a burst far more intense than individual emissions. If the same principle applies to neutrino emissions, then instead of waiting months for radioactive decay to release neutrinos, you could see them happen in minutes. In fact, the MIT team used rubidium-83 as an example. Normally, rubidium-83 has a half-life of about 82 days, which means that it takes up to that many days for half of the atoms in a sample to decay. But their calculations suggest that if you put about a million rubidium-83 atoms into a Bose-Einstein condensate and trigger a superradiant effect, you could get the same amount of neutrino emissions in just minutes, compressing months of natural decay into a short burst. Now the catch is that it is still theoretical. Making a Bose-Einstein condensate of radioactive atoms is extremely challenging because radioactive isotopes don't sit still for long and you'd have to cool them before too many decayed. And even if you succeed, neutrinos are known to be hard to detect because they slip through almost everything. So proving this in practice will be very tricky. But if it does work, the possibilities are exciting. A compact tabletop source of neutrino beams could transform how physicists study these particles, letting us probe mysteries like how neutrinos change identity as they travel. And there might even be practical applications like using neutrinos for communication that can pass straight through Earth or generate useful isotopes for medical imaging and therapy in new ways. What makes this proposal so intriguing is that it connects two worlds that don't usually overlap. Quantum optics with its laser and ultra-cold atoms and nuclear physics with its radioactive decay. And it also suggests that the rate of the nuclear decay 
might actually be tunable in exotic quantum conditions. So of course, neutrino lasers aren't going to appear in your pocket tomorrow. But the fact that scientists can even sketch out this idea shows how far we've come and how something that sounds like science fiction with ghostly beams shooting through the planet might actually be grounded in real laboratory science. That's all from me today. I'm Soumya Pillai and this was Pure Science.